How did I feel? I felt, uh, I felt not afraid, but I, I felt, uh, I just felt gutted, to tell you the truth, that I was never going to hear silence again. I love silence <laughs> every now and again. You know, I love music, but, you know, things are in balance and you know, I love silence too. And it's, it's a pretty depressing thought that I'm never going to hear it again. Tinnitus is a condition that affects one in 10 people in the UK alone. Most of us have had it. It's that annoying ringing in your ears you get after a night out or a gig. Three million have visited their GP about it, and many more don't even know what it is or how to manage it. After years, or even actually after decades, of going to gigs and having a ringing in my ear afterwards, which, which I thought was just part and parcel of going to that gig, of course one day that ringing never stopped. And at that point I realised that I had tinnitus. And uh, I did what uh, anybody should do, I just went straight to my GP. Eddie Temple Morris is a man of many talents. He's an XFM DJ, TV presenter, producer, and an ambassador for the British Tinnitus Association. I first experienced tinnitus when I was 12 years old, uh, and I was on a, a holiday visiting my uh, cousins in Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama. And I went to see probably my favorite band at that time, Van Halen, with Dave Lee Roth play at their Civic Center Coliseum. That's like 100,000 people. One of them. It was probably the greatest gig I've ever seen in my, in my life, but I couldn't hear for about three, four days afterwards. I mean, I really, it was really, really bad. But then it, you know, as it always did, well, almost always did afterwards, it, it just went away, you know, after a, an amount of time. It's heard in different ways, from a low rumble, to a high-pitched squeal, ranging in severity from slight to catastrophic. For at least half a million people, the effect it has on their lives is severe. It's like that really annoying I don't know, it's a, just a really high-pitched noise, like in the background, there's nothing I can really think of that you can maybe relate it to. Um, but it's just really high-pitched, sort of a constant level tone. Uh, there is times that obviously like fluctuates sort of thing where it maybe changes real slightly and that's when you notice obviously that it has maybe changed. But pretty much it is just a constant, like high level tone constantly in my, in my ear. Chris Barker is a self-employed father of one and developed tinnitus at just 22 years old while serving his country. Chris's tinnitus could have been prevented with simple ear protection. But, as he explains, a combination of simply following orders and his hesitance in seeking specialist medical advice has led to where he is today. Basically, we had a, a radio on. Obviously, you need to hear, keep in communication with everyone as you're doing the exercise, obviously, in case anything goes wrong. And, Obviously I was quite senior, so I had to obviously give my orders to the younger ones that maybe recently joined up. Um, basically, if, if I'd have had this, like normally you wear like a squidgy, you know, like yellow ear protection, like the squidgy ones, basically we got told to put them in from the off. But because of the PRR on the radio that said, right, take it out your left ear so you can hear us clearly. So obviously I was just following orders, um, took it out, and obviously as soon as we started firing, I knew there was a sort of a problem because it was live rounds and it was, Basically, if anything went wrong, it is serious sort of thing. I just obviously carried on with what I was doing and what I'd been told to do. It's been just over a week on a, on a drip, basically. They were trying to, it was some sort of, I think it was a steroid treatment to try and increase, obviously, the blood flow and stuff like that to the, to the ear, try and repair it. 
Um, but obviously once I did get speaking to the actual specialist said obviously it's been left if he'd come to us a day that it happened obviously there'd be maybe an 80% more likely chance that we could have corrected it or minimised it at least um, but because they left it for like five six days before I actually got to see a specialist it uh, he pretty much said it's it's that's it sort of thing you'll have to see how it goes from here. Though Chris has since learned to cope with tinnitus and set up a successful printing business he never thought that it would be this invisible condition that would cause him to leave the army and shatter his dreams of a career in the forces. It was maybe a year later when I had to, I had to leave obviously due to the tinnitus. Um, in the end it wasn't a medical discharge just because of the pure fact I'd been off for so long trying to obviously deal with the tinnitus. Obviously I had some depression from obviously overnight I'd gone from being able to do what I want to obviously it was a, a massive life changer. Um, but in the end, obviously, the, the tinnitus and the hearing loss was a massive contribution to obviously me leaving the army. Um, I was a tank driver in the army, so I couldn't no longer work on the tanks that I'd been trained up to do. I ended up having to make the decision where we had to did, obviously terminate my contract within the armed forces. Um, so I had a massive career effect in that terms, where I was obviously I was looking to stay in and obviously make a career out of it. Um, it sort of did cut that short and subsequently have an effect on any further sort of jobs that I could, I could maybe do. The UCL Ear Institute is one of the few places in the UK with a dedicated tinnitus research programme. Chief researcher Dr Roland Shett is leading the fight towards finding a cure. Tinnitus is a phantom sound. You're hearing a sound that is actually not there. So there's no um, loudspeaker or, or a sound source outside of your body that's generating the sound. Tinnitus might be, uh, become more problematic in the younger generation now that the, uh, the uh, self-inflicted exposure to, uh, to loud sound and music uh, is becoming more and more prevalent. Hearing damage uh, is, is not immediately recognized. You can have, have a lot of hearing damage before you actually notice a problem and it's better to be safe than sorry and for example uh, when you go clubbing invest in a good pair of earplugs there are some that just take the the edge off so that uh, the sound still sounds right but um, you're damaging your hearing and if you if you regularly have ringing ears after after you went clubbing you're definitely not doing your ears a service and uh, in the long run you you might uh, develop hearing loss Well, when the doctor told me, I broke down in the chair crying in front of the doctor and in front of a nurse for about a couple of minutes because he said to me that there's no cure for what I have. And that was it then. And then, so I just cried in the chair and went home and didn't feel very happy. <laughs> Holly is 26 and works as an IT sales advisor in Birmingham. Her story is typical of many young people simply wanting to enjoy a night out with friends, unaware of the damage she was doing to her ears. I was in Manchester with the girls. We were going to a restaurant and then a club after, and a bar before the club. And I remember being really tired and really worn out from the week before my holiday, and I'd be for the week before, and then I was in the club in Manchester, enjoying myself, having a few drinks with my friends and having a few more drinks, dancing, our favourite songs were playing, I was having, really enjoying myself, having the time of my life. And um, half five in the morning my friend said, right we're leaving now, we're going, I was like, I didn't want to go, I need to start, I was having a great time. But then um, little did I think, would I have known this would have happened to me and if I'd have known now, I wouldn't have never have gone at all, ever. A few of these people have got so desperate that they've asked their GP to refer them to a surgeon to cut their um, auditory nerve. In other words, to become deaf. And um, there have been cases that, that this has happened and that the GP has been dumb enough to refer them to a surgeon and that then that surgeon has been dumb enough to perform the operation. And that's two levels of, un of, 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 you know, safety, two safety nets that both broke, you know, because at the GP level, any GP worth their salt should go, no, what are you talking about? Like, you want to become deaf, you mentalist. Like, because in every case, they've become deaf with tinnitus. It's not an ear issue, it's a brain, it's, it's a brain issue. So, you know, we've got brain damage, not earache, you know, or anything like that. 
tinnitus is a serious issue. And just browsing through the posts on the British Tinnitus Association and Action on Hearing Loss web support forums significantly echoes this sentiment. Just turned 19 and had it for about nine months now. It's getting worse and worse. My life is spiralling down to destruction. I feel so sorry for myself now. I am the youngest tea sufferer ever, only 17. Had it for more than two months now. Tea is and will be ruining my whole life. I want to cry now. I've had it for 15 years. I originally got tea after a loud concert, but for 15 years it was so mild that it didn't disturb me. Now the intensity of the sound has suddenly grown and I'm falling into darkness with it. I am 40, had tea five weeks, and the last five days have been hell. I'm slipping into a dark hole fast. My life is over. Robert McKindo, a keen musician and rock fan, took his own life after he was left with tinnitus in 2011 after seeing the rock supergroup Them Crooked Vultures. The constant irritation of tinnitus set in and immediately set about disrupting his daily life. After being passed between doctors and being made to feel like a fraud, the closest Robert got to a form of treatment was sleeping tablets. The maddening ringing continued and he even considered getting his auditory nerve cut before he eventually took his own life. The best advice I ever got so sounds kind of flippant, but it's actually really good advice and that's just forget about it. If you can, if you can forget about it, then it won't bother you. Um, there are obvious coping mechanisms for people who've just got tinnitus. Um, just introducing ambient noise into your, into your life when it's really bothering you early in the morning or late at night. Radio, TV, a DVD, um, you know, listen to music. That's all really, really good. Um, it, anything you can do to take your mind off it is great. You know, just reading a book, or just get, focusing on something. I mean, anything you can do, sex, even, you know, again, great, I'll take your mind off anything. If I said to you girls, tinnitus, would you know what that means? No. <laughs> like a, a hissing or a high pitched ringing noise in your ears, probably from loud music or other loud noise. Where it's like a hearing thing if it's loud music too much, it's like a buzzing in your ear, like a constant thing. That's a tinnitus to you guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. Tinnitus? Yes, yeah, ringing in your ears. It tends to be more of a thudding when I've woken up after drink, <laughs> rather than like ringing. Do you know what tinnitus was? No idea. What? I've got it now. <laughs> no. The ring, the ring. Sorry. The ringing. Yeah. 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 Oh, I hate it, I've had it before for gig. It's yeah. like, oh god, it's annoying. Yeah. It's ringing in the ear from loud music. Does it worry you all that kind of ringing in your ears might stay there? No. <laughs> oh yeah, you would have to sleep with the shower on or something. Do you, you know when you listen to your earphones, do you have them on like really, really loud? Are they as loud as they go? Yeah. Do they not, loud. Yeah. Do they not worry you all that kind of playing it loud? Yeah. Worry about what it can do to your hearing a bit later on in life? It's like um, a TV channel that's not tuned in properly. The ch and the, and the high pitch ringing every single day. Like day and night. When you're trying to sleep, it's the worst. It's really loud. And if you're stressed about something or something's on your mind, it's even louder. It's like amplified even louder. So that's the sound. <laughs> Just try and be positive and try and be hopeful of one day there being a cure. Hopefully my generation there will be. Back at the Ear Institute, using the latest hearing research methods, the challenge to find a cure goes on. Here we are in the Anikirk chamber of the Ear Institute. It's our most quiet room and it's got all these foam uh, triangles at the wall that uh, absorb all reflections. So there's, it's not only silent here, but there's also no 
uh, reflections of sound. So um, it's about as silent as you can get. And actually in this room here, um, even if you take normal persons in here and let them stand here for a few minutes, um, because of the absolute silence, a lot of them start hearing some, some tinnitus sounds themselves because um, the auditory system actually doesn't like to hear nothing. It, it likes to, to hear something and when it's absolutely silent, uh, it might just increase all the, the gain on all channels and start, uh, start producing the tinnitus. But of course, the question every tinnitus sufferer wants answered, just how close are we to a cure? We're now in the process of really getting down to the mechanisms of tinnitus to understand what's happening in the, in the brain uh, that's generating the tinnitus. It's uh, a worldwide effort at the moment that more and more research teams are getting interested in tinnitus and are produ producing new results that uh, tell us how tinnitus is generated. And now that we are in the process of getting to the bottom of it, um, I can say that we're not quite there yet, but we're getting really close. Chris Martin, lead singer of the band Coldplay, recently revealed his struggle with tinnitus, saying that it's a condition that's been plaguing him for 12 years. He's spoken of his regret that he simply didn't address the issue earlier by wearing earplugs at his live shows. Along with rapper Plan B, he's publicly backed Action on Hearing Loss's campaign, which spells out the potential dangers of prolonged exposure to loud noise. But they're not the only famous faces to have suffered tinnitus. Why isn't more being done to educate people about the dangers of exposure to loud noise and irreparable damage it can cause to their ears and indeed their lives? Was tinnitus the real reason why Vincent van Gogh cut off his own ear? Surely we need more people like Chris Martin and Eddie to speak publicly about a condition that can have such a devastating impact on a life. I was always aware of it but never to the point where I'd go out my way to avoid noise. Um, obviously once I did have the tinnitus it was a, a completely different thing. I didn't really care at the time because I never thought an invisible danger like loud music would affect me. I fear, I fear for kids and, and for, for you know, everyone today because one in ten people in this country have tinnitus and yet the government have never spent a penny to let anybody know. There's the only awareness that happens is through the BTA, through me, through people just talking about it on Twitter. Um, you know, in the, in the build up to bonfire night, governments spend millions, millions, letting us all know what we already know, that it's a bit dangerous lighting a firework. You know, yeah, we've got that now. Um, if one in ten people burnt themselves in a firework, the queue for A&E on the 6th of November, on the night of the 5th of November, would each one would stretch to the queue of the next hospital in the next county. Um, yet, government just haven't woken up and done anything, so nobody's, nobody's aware. I feel like um, my life kind of has been put on hold from that weekend in Manchester, because I always look back and think, what if, what if I didn't go? And I always, I can remember it clearly, like it was yesterday. I can remember what I was wearing, because it's such a like important date in my mind. It's from when my life changed, really. Every day I go on the tube and I can hear somebody's MP3 player or their iPhone or whatever it is, and I can hear them from 20 paces away. I can hear it clearly, so it must be just ravaging their synapses, ravaging their, their inner ear. And, you know, these people are going to end up with brain damage. So, until the government really step up to the plate and actually do something, I'm not, it's not a big deal, you know, it's just, 
let people, or how about a public information film? I mean, you know, how much is it gonna cost to make one goddamn little film to show on telly um, when they do it about all these hundreds of other different things, none of which have as much of an impact as, to, well, most of which don't have as much of an impact on, on, on people as, uh, as tinnitus. So, you know, let's, let's, have some, let's have some awareness.